Good morning. It's me again. We're back with Richard's uh, yard where all the steam engines are, or tractors and everything else. And I uh, hope you enjoy this video. It's about a steam engine. I've got the chap behind me. His name's John. And he's going to tell us all about it. Now, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up for us. I mean, do John a favour and it could do me a favour as well, as I say. And uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you like the series of videos, what I'm doing, don't forget to hit that subscription button. It's only just down here, but it'd be great. So anyway, I'm going to bring John in there and uh, we're going to have a little chat about his history of it, how did he get over of it, and what is he restored it. Anyway, what was that? Was hey, John. Okay. So, history. How did you come across this lovely machine? Uh, came across it because it was sat here. Um, we got into the farm and the, the sort of community that we've got here as steam engines of people uh, through Roger. Uh, Roger owns one of the uh, engines that's in the yep. shed here. Um, and when we started helping Roger with his engine here, um, the roller was already here under a sheet. Um, yep. So many times we came here and it was always under the sheet. We'd never seen it without uh, the sheet on it. Um, and then once me and James got to talking one day and we said, yeah, we'd like to own a roller. Um, word got round as it were. Yep. And uh, the owner of the roller at that time uh, approached us and said, well, you know, would you like it? Um, would you be interested in having it? So we said, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be nice to see it, what's under the sheet first. Uh, and that's how we came across it really. So um, yeah, it was, it's been here for a long time now, 15, 20 years, something like that. Can I stop you? You, you are part ownership with this, didn't you? Part, half ownership, yeah. Half ownership, yeah. and with, what's with the, James, Taylor. James, and James Taylor. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, yeah. And so the partnership's been going on for? Oh, we've had this for over two years now. Me and James have known each other probably about five years, something like Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Um, and both of us wanted uh, a road steam engine. Um, both of us are sort of young, going into the world. We just bought houses and things like that, trying yeah. to get funds together to buy something like this on your own is quite difficult. Yeah. Um, and both of us have found through doing it, having the engine, doing the restoration work, that neither of us would actually want to own it on our own. Um, because the amount of work that's involved in keeping one of these things up and running yep. um, and just the physical size of the thing when you're trying to do work on it um, we, we You need both, two people, you, you? need You need a, at least, yeah, you need two people at least yep. um, We've both found that you know, we've come down here and worked on it on our own instead of um, together and you get about a quarter of much done as if mm. there's two of you because yep. it's not half the amount of work done because the, the extra time it takes you to get all the extra things set up and in place um, it's so much easier with two people, so yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's always been that way. Now, us. I don't know if it's true or not, but someone just told me, but you've hand painted this machine. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, I'm sort of looking at the, the what you've done, hand, it just looks too good to be hand painted, but I'm taking it from the horse's mouth now. Yeah, You yeah. actually did a hand painting. Yeah, the, the, the engine's been totally hand painted, um, apart from some of the uh, lagging work at the front that we um, hand painted all the undercoats and then the top coat was sprayed, but all of this tender work at the back here, all of these coats uh, were hand painted on by the previous owner. Um, it was maybe one of the reasons why it never got finished because it took so long for him to hand paint the whole thing really? to the standard that he's got it to, oh, God. Um, which is absolutely incredible. So uh, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely been uh, a labour of love from that point of view. Okay, and when you picked it up, you, you said some was painted. Was it a, a running steam engine, was it? <laughs> no, no. Um, we bought it as a big kit of bits, basically. So when we bought it, rear rolls weren't on, none of the motion work on the top was on, none of the back end fittings, um, the steering, the reversing lever, um, the canopy or anything like that was on it. Um, so when we, one of the first pictures we have of it is um, with James stood where motion um, is now, because you could, stand up there there was nothing there at all right. um, all of it was underneath the engine and um, the the sort of process of getting all the bits identifying what the bits are yep. were, um, and getting them all up there um, was basically the whole the first year of ownership um, so the first year of ownership we managed to get all of the running motion back on wheels everything painted up and it was a running machine within a right. year um, what about the boiler? Did you have to have that tested or was that out in good well, We had to have the boiler tested, yeah. The boiler had been, um, it had been done by a professional um, and it had had a hydraulic test on it and certificate, but it hadn't been used in the time that it had had that hydraulic uh, yep. test on it. So when we came to start using it again, we had to rehydraulic the boiler um, and then go through the cold and steam test as well. Um, but the boiler work that was done on it was, is amazing. Um, the boiler work is really, really good mm. on it. So we haven't had to do any boiler work on this. Yeah. Which is obviously a massive benefit, and one of the reasons when we sort of looked at buying an engine, and we went, "Yeah, this is this is a 
good one to buy because we didn't have to do the boiler wash. Because all of them are getting up to 100 years old now. Yeah, obviously, yeah. And, uh, and the all eight, what, you say over 100 years old, do you know the age of the vehicle? Yeah, 1930, so 1930. Um, she's coming up to 100 years old. Oh, okay, uh, fantastic. So it's a later, a later build um, yeah. for, the, for the aliens, just before it went into Avon and Barford and um, they started doing Okay, uh, and um, obviously you show it. Yes, yes, we do. But unfortunately this year has been a bit yeah, I mean that's why we're that's why we're that's, apart because of yeah. the COVID thing, you know. Um, the, this year has been a blessing in disguise, really, um, because prior to where we are today, there was no canopy on the engine at all. The lagging sheets weren't um, around the boiler. There was so much painting work and stuff left to do that it would have been very tricky this year to do events and do the work on it at the same time. Yeah, and actually try and squeeze because basically we've been um, at the it was. We did a last event in um, September last year, and since then it's just been parked worked up. on and parked up. We haven't used it, but it's taken us until now to get to the point, it's 12 months basically, to yeah. get to the point where it's nearly completed. So if we were trying to squeeze all that into one winter to get it done, that would have been a complete mission. But mm. if we hadn't managed to do that, then it's another two years, you know, until it's getting completed. So. We've got family life, obviously, and obviously, have you got a partner as well? I have a partner, yes, and, I do. Have a partner. Uh, and I'm sure she she probably doesn't want you to spend every minute of your time <laughs> up here. You're laughing. I, I like yeah. the, the, the laugh. But perhaps yeah. she sees this video and and uh, think, well, you know, perhaps he's doing something with his time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the important thing is time's not wasted. I mean, for me, the uh, one of the sort of like, the bigger difficulties. I live in the Midlands, <gasps> um, so I come down here each each weekend. Um, to, to work on this at really? the weekend, yeah, yeah. So, and you stay down here for the weekend? Or yeah, my, my parents are about half an hour away from here, so I stay with my parents when I'm down here. Um, obviously, the things with COVID made things more difficult. We're not being able to stay over, yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm basically down here uh, one day every weekend. Um, so that's a so. passion of love, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's some uh, some madness to get out of bed at quarter past six on Saturday morning, get in the car, do two and a quarter hours down here in the car to, exactly. to work on it. So. I won't ask you how much it's cost because if the wife is going to see this. <laughs> It's best not to ask. Yeah, you yeah. know. But yeah. these things, maintenance-wise, they're a they're a big expense. And yeah, they are. I mean, it, it depends what you have to do to them and when. Um, if you, the best thing to do is spread it out over as, as big a period yeah. as you can. There are things that are unavoidable, like if you get boiler work done and stuff, it's going to go out in big lumps. There's just, just no getting away from that. Yeah. Um, but everything else, um, all of the bits that we bought and paid for and done on it, like all the roof. Um, oh, that looks know. stunning. Yeah, You've done a fantastic well. job with that. Um, what yeah. we do now then, we're, 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 at, we're, we're have a walk round and perhaps you can show me bits you've done this year on it. Yeah, sure. And that'd be great. So yeah, yeah. No we'll worries. catch you in a little while. No right, we're back with John. He's going to walk around there and tell us all about what he's done and uh, we won't talk about money. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to show the paintwork first, John, because yeah, I'm sure. just astonished that it's been done. Oh, we can't see this side because of the light. We, we'll have a look next door with the light anyway. Yeah. So sure. you sit in that position there, I presume? Uh, yeah, sit or stand, um, whichever's easier at the time. Uh, now we've got the canopy on, it makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of see. Yep. Uh, out the front so we might spend a little bit more time sat on the side so that you can see around the front of it when you're going yep. um, but uh, yeah sit or stand um, there's just a, a, a leather uh, padded seat here uh, which I made um, in the garage to uh, sit on but it's actually surprisingly comfortable um, so uh, yeah it's a, it's a nice place to sit future works will be to put the scarifier in place here and um, just for the people of my scarifier is so Scarify originally um, was for breaking up the road. Um, so there were big tines that pointed forwards. And gotcha. as, as you drove down the road, it just, you wound it down, it dug into the road and it just pulled the road up as you're going along. Oh. And I think that's one of the reasons why people like, they use the phrase, oh, it goes like a steamroller or something because it could just rip the road up going along at walking pace. And you think the power of the thing to do that Fantastic. was amazing. Um, so we've got the scarifier box to go on here, but we're going to modify it um, to carry tools and equipment because obviously we don't want to be ripping up the road nowadays. Um, so we won't have the tines and things in the bottom, but it'll be great storage to be able to carry tools, oil, um, anything that we need, you know, on our journey. So that's something to do anyway, at least. But that might then um, have a seat on the top of it. Yeah. So the steersman's seat um, could then be outside here, which gives the driver a bit more room on the footplate because um, it's, it's quite a cramped place 
that's all right, no worries. The uh, compressor come on yeah. and we, we had to stop for a little while. Um, so just saying, yeah, the uh, when we get the, the scarifier on, there'll be a seat on top of the scarifier um, and then the steersman will sit outside of the engine, which will give more room to the driver on the foot plate because it is quite cramped in there to swing a shovel. Um, to get the coal yeah, into the firebox whilst you're driving and there's someone else stood on the footplate at the oh, same time. Um, so Do you argue your, your partner about who's driving and who's... No, no, we just we just swap around. Um, uh, for both of us, just the, being, the feeling of being out on it, on the road, is you know exactly what we like. Excitement um, to the most, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to show the, the viewers now the roof you put on this year. Now it's... Yeah, sure. Yeah, the roof was... It's been done from scratch, um, so the, the metal uprights that you see, um, the sort of the dark red metal uprights that you got there, none of that iron work was there, um, let alone all the woodwork on the top. So I uh, basically the whole thing from scratch. Um, I reckon that we we started that in December, January, and we're sort of at the point of finishing it now with sign writing going on with the green boards on the side. Yeah, and, and uh, we have a a really good tech sign writer who um, loves doing the job, and uh, he's been. Um, in to prep the wood now ready for him to do sign writing on um, so yeah it's been about 10 10 11 months um, of work to get to that point um, all of the uh, all of the metal uprights that you've got on here um, I'm sure you, you can show an image of the back is that none of them line up all right. they're all offset one to the other so the ones that you got at the back here are in the middle of the tender but then the ones in the middle are offset um, to the left and the ones at the front are offset to the right. So um, for anyone who's sort of engineering minded. Sorry Peter, we were saying the compressor come on again. <laughs> as it does, yeah. Um, so I don't know what I got to with the roof, but yeah, um, as I said, people who are engineering minded um, is because all the, the uprights are offset to each other, what you need from all the uprights is to have a consistent curve across the top to put the um, light and coloured dark batons down it. Yep. So we had to draw that on the computer in CAD so that we knew that the curve would be in the right place. You had to set it up with a laser level um, to make sure all the holes were drilled in the right place. Um, and then we could then print one-to-one um, -one plots for those bits of wood, the uh, supports that go um, uh, yep. across the whole roof. Um, and then cut them out, sand them, prep them, um, and get them up there. So then that, when we put all those up there, because we'd done the CAD work um, and we'd plotted out and printed it one-to-one -one size, um, we knew that it was consistent front to back on the roof, and then we could put all the slats on and things like that. But the, the light and dark pieces that go across, uh, ash and sapili, sapili is a different version of mahogany. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a hardwood, but a different version. Uh, More sust sustained version? Yeah, mahogany um, mahogany's protected now, um, so it's very difficult to get hold of. It's like teak, you can't yeah. get hold of it. Um, so it's, it's, this is exactly the same as mahogany, it's just a, uh, you know, a different tree and a different name, but uh, it does exactly the same job. But all those were just uh, plain strips of wood, um, so you can see all the beveled edges on them uh, between each joint, and then we had to route the edges um, and put a um, small um, strip of ply between everything. Um, as biscuit joints, so all of those biscuit jointed um, as they would have been done back in the day. Um, and then you've got the speedy boards down the side, which are green on the outside. And then, uh, so we've got the sign writer coming in to uh, to do the sign writing. So it'll, in effect, it'll look oh, yes. like um, look like what he's done here, um, Andy, our sign writer. Um, we're going to have uh, Avelyn and Porter down the side. Um, with the engine, so he'll come in to do that in, in, the, in the next couple and of weeks. And is the roof fiberglassed or something on top? So the roof, it's traditional, um, so you've got canvas over the top, um, and then there's a, a ceiling agent, um, a very thick kind of goopy paint um, that's also got fibres in it. It's not fiberglass, it's a fibrous paint. Um, and you put layers of that on, then put the canvas into it, and then paint that over the top, and that completely waterproof seals Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's very waterproof up there. Fantastic. Um, which is good. So. With the English climate, you need it, didn't you? After all. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, we know that it's going to rain at some point when we've got it out, so, uh, yeah, yeah, having the roof to... to I see you got rubber on the... Is it rubber yeah, on the yeah, wheels, drive yeah, wheels? Yeah, rubber, rubber Is that on, too, on because the of the road? road? You don't want to break the road up or anything, is it? Um, a, few, a couple of reasons is it wouldn't break the road up because we're a roller, so it's got smooth wheels, whereas um, the powering engines down yeah. the end, you know, they've got straight wheels because they're going in the field. So we wouldn't dig up the road. Um, it's a noise point of view and a vibration point of view when you're driving. These, even though it's solid, there's no, you know, it's not pneumatic. 
and the carrying on from the compressor. <laughs> So yeah, even though these are solid rubber, they're not um, pneumatic in any way, um, they take out a lot of the vibration that goes through the engine when you're driving down the road, uh, make it a lot more pleasant to be on. They take away a lot of the noise as well. Um, and again, it just makes it a lot more pleasant to be on um, when you're going down the road. Um, so this was done before we had the engine. Um, if, if it hadn't have been done before they had the engine, we probably would have done it ourselves anyway, mm. um, because it is a is a really good addition just to make it more usable and more kind of sort yeah, it stops the vibration. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I so. did notice, uh, John, there's a, a a funny pin that sticks out here. Now tell <laughs> us all about that thing. Uh, it's one of the drive pegs that you got, which basically um, transmits the drive um, from the axle out to the wheels, because this engine's got a differential on it. Um, which meant that you could um, maneuver it around sort of tight spaces. With it being a road roller, if you were maneuvering it around on freshly laid road, if it didn't have the differential, and therefore the wheels, you were sort of turning a tight corner, but the wheels were both trying to turn at the same speed, it would rip up the tarmac that's just been laid, oh, which okay. you know would kind of annoy. So people. you would remove one pin, turn the corner, would you? See, so you, you could you can have it with one or both pins. I'll see if I can pull that out. There you go. Um, but it is a. Uh, a dirty great drive pin. That is a, um, a that is a proper pin. That is that a, is a yeah decent decent sized pin. So. so how would you line that up normally? You just have to keep going until it sort of clogs. Yeah it yeah exactly yeah. You just line it up as uh, as best you can. Really, it's not necessarily the easiest thing, but it means that if we do go to um, rallies and things where it gets wet and muddy, um, we can always put the drive pin in the other side and then have two-wheel drive effectively yeah. instead of one-wheel drive. Lock, basically. Exactly yeah diff lock. Um, so you know we've got the option. I'll put that in, in a minute because. Okay. Uh, it's, it's moving on. The flywheel was there, I presume that's the flywheel. Yeah, the got, main yeah. yeah. Engine. Big flywheel. Um, talking about other things we've done over winter, um, all this, all these lagging sheets here yep. um, was big major projects over winter. So last year it didn't have any lagging sheets, this, these green sheets over the boiler at all. So we just had the boiler completely exposed. Um, and that was a six month project to get these um, on painted as they are now. Um, did you paint them? Uh, we did all of the undercoats, um, but I did get someone to spray the top coat on these sheets. Um, everything else was- Not hand painted. painted. But no, no, you're letting it yeah, down. Yeah, we did. Um, we kind of chickened out on that one um, because it is such a huge visual part of the, um, yeah, the of engine. Um, and neither of us are expert hand painters. So um, the, the previous owner was extremely good at hand painting. Um, we're not experts. I've, I've dabbled in it. I, painted the um, cylinder block covers here and the um, mud old door finisher uh, Fantastic. there. So. Why are your partners uh, sort of scuffing around in the background? <laughs> Preston, you need to introduce him for us. Uh, this is James, I think you've, you've spoken to James before, you've seen James. James, you can't be shy now, come on. <laughs> you can't get away from it now. We spoke before, now come on. What are you after? Look. So, and uh, you've, you've done all the installation work this year. Yep. Uh, the rollers in fantastic condition. It's, well, it's all in fantastic uh, condition. So, what's your aim for the following year without COVID? Playing with it, enjoying it. Literally mm -hmm. playing with it, enjoying it, um, learning about it. You know, we we haven't done much mileage on it up to this date, so you know we don't know everything about how it drives and. Um, uh, what it's like on longer journeys and things. So yeah, we just want to use it. Um, yeah. Just go and enjoy it. I mean, you're lucky you've got Richard who lets you keep it here. Absolutely. And, and you've got the yeah. land if, in the, when the, the, the ground outside dries out, you can actually have a play around the yard. Of the yeah, zone. absolutely. Yeah, just around the farm. I mean, it's really useful to be able to do that. So if we change things, um, so we change some of the way it lubricates, um, both on the, um, the lower half and the top half of the roller. So to actually just be able to see it around the farm and see how that's performing, it's really useful because then you're not sort of trapped out on the road somewhere. And if you break down, you're in, you know, in, uh, in trouble as it were. So um, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's great. And we're very, very thankful to Richard um, and Duncan for um, letting us keep it here. Um, it's, it's amazing facility and to have it covered um, and secure is uh, is a huge bonus. So. Fantastic. Moving on round to the front, the badge on the front is quite something, isn't it? I've noticed earlier. Uh, yeah, the uh, the old uh, Avon horse on the horse uh, of Kent, yeah, basically on the front. Um, do you so. know the? Do you know? You do know the history of it, didn't you? So it's 1930s built. Yeah, 1930s built. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was uh, its name is Canterbury Corporation. It was new to the Canterbury Corporation slash council. That's effectively it was Canterbury County Council's roller. Um, it was the as the number one says on the front. It was the first one that they purchased from Avon and Porter. Oh, okay. um, so it spent all its working life there. It's the 
we got a lot of history on the roller um, from all of its preservation life and everything that was uh, all the rallies it was taken to and the condition that different conditions that it was in but um, we don't have much on the, uh, the working life of it um, which is a shame because um, we'd like to like to have seen photos of it uh, when it was working um, in Canterbury um, yeah. so if any but anyone viewing has got any pictures of it working that'd be amazing yeah well perhaps next year in the summer time and you will steam it up perhaps I can come along and do a a live video yeah. steaming up yeah, fantastic yeah absolutely right we can't get round that way so we have to go right around the other side okay james give us a quick hello <laughs> do you you enjoy this work do you always enjoy it and, doing and, it for long enough yeah, <laughs> it looks really nice well done best one in the best one in there i think <laughs> oh, oh i won't certain. argue there <laughs> Pretty certain. Right, back with John again. It's an Avelyn and Porter, is Avelyn that correct? Avelyn Porter, yeah, Avelyn Porter, um, built in Rochester uh, in Kent. Uh, one of the interesting facts about this is that it's believed to have never ever left the county of Kent in its entire life. Um, all the rallies it did, so it worked in Kent, all the rallies it did were in Kent and it went on the road between every single rally and even in its restoration and the preservation life that we've had it, it's never left Kent. So uh, it might have never ever left the county of Kent, which oh is uh, quite extraordinary that for something that's nearly 100 years old and is a road vehicle, so uh, yeah. Tell us about steering. Now I'm seeing steering <laughs> on the floor. Yeah, um, the, uh, it's pretty simple, um, it works pretty much as you could guess looking at the two chains you've got one chain that pulls it one way one chain that pulls it the other uh, it's on that bobbin uh, in the middle um, steered from uh, up on top of the uh, the engine um, being a roller um, steering is quite a high ratio um, so we haven't counted it yet but you'll be something between 80 and 90 turns from lock to lock um, on the steering wheel so when you've got a when you're coming up to a junction or you're trying to get around a roundabout or something um, it's a lot of turns on the wheel to, to get yourself around there and if you're trying to park it even in this space actually just trying to get it in through the door and in yep. here um, yeah it's a lot of turns on the wheel um, so steering is not a necessarily a relaxing job as some people might think it is compared to driving so, yeah but the, the rubber helps obviously the rubber helps a bit yeah and um, the rubber stops you skating across the floor so obviously the engine would have a tendency to push the front rolls like understeer effectively across the road or yep. across a solid you know floor like this so the rubber does help from that point of view um, to sort of make it a bit easier to turn um, and to, to move around so okay john is there anything else last we can talk about your machine uh, lots of things that we could um, always mention um the there's there's lots of other small projects on it it's it's i think obviously for people looking at it they'll go oh it's a complete engine but actually like we talked about with the scarifier and other bits it's a long game project the small things take a long time okay um and we always said it's not a five minute job on anything you pick up um and do so i'm making trimmings on the top at the moment um you know it's it looks like two two minutes work to make a trimming. Um, That's for the oilers. Yeah, for the it? oilers in the top, but actually um, it's taken sort of an hour to make four, and then I've got to take loads of bits off the top to be able to get to the uh, the plugs to put these in. So, uh, and someone comes along and interrupts you. That's the worst thing. Comes, comes along well, thanks ever so much for your no information about your lovely machine, and uh, hopefully we'll see it steamed up one yeah, day. Absolutely, look forward to it and seeing it. Thanks ever so much, then. Cheers. Cheerio. Well there you go, hope you enjoyed that, lovely old girl, and uh, like I say, if you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me, that'd be great, and uh, subscribe to the video, and if you want to share the video, please do, that'd be great for me, thanks a lot, cheerio.